Hi, yeah, two children. I'm going to continue reading David Walliams' book, Slime. Do you remember where we got to? We were up to chapter five. And remember, Ned had found lots and lots of mysterious jars full of gunk, really. And what his sister Jemima was planning to do with him. Ned's eyes widened at the horror, the unspeakable horror. The words and pictures in her books told the story in gruesome detail. So this was what his wicked sister was planning. There were lists, calendars, graphs, diagrams and even a flick book of how it would all play out. It was called Ned's Birthday Surprise. And it was the boy's birthday tomorrow. Once a year on his birthday, Ned had a bath. I know that doesn't sound like many baths in one year. One, I myself like to wash at least twice a year, unless I'm already clean and there's no need. Sometimes I lick myself clean like a cat, says Mr. Williams. In the family cottage, there was only enough hot water for one bathful a day. Of course, Jemima always backseat every drop of hot water for herself. No wonder her parents reeked of fish. The only exception to this rule was on her little brother's birthday. On that special day, Jemima would be forced by her parents to relent and let little stinky Ned have a yearly soak. So the plan was that tomorrow Jemima would fill the bath with all the gunk. Every last drop from every single jar would be emptied until the bath was full to the brim. Then she'd squirt bubbles on top of the gunk so Ned wouldn't see the horror that was lurking underneath. The Bath of Doom. There was even a cutaway diagram in her exercise book showing the hidden layer of gunk. So bubbles, water, gunk. Jemima knew her little brother would suspect nothing. This was his birthday treat after all. Ned would think it was a lovely bath full of warm water and lower himself into it. Then uh, he would scream as he was covered from head to toe in gunk. Ned dropped Jemima's book in shock. Thunk! The girl stirred. Ned held his breath. Then she turned over and went straight back to sleep. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Taking care, the boy rolled himself back out of Jemima's bedroom. He had to reverse his wheelchair, as with the mountain of jars, there wasn't room to turn round. Trundle, trundle, trundle. Then, disaster! Clunk, clink, clank. The footrest on his wheelchair just clipped one of the jars on the floor. There must have been 50 jars stacked on top of it. Ned reached out, but he was too late. The skyscraper of jars being toppled over. Tipple, topple, topple. The jar at the top was heading straight for Jemima. As it fell through the air, it was as if time sped up and slowed down all at once. Snatch! Ned caught the jar just as it was a milli, milli, millimetre from thunking his sister on the head. As much as he may have wanted to see his sister thunked on the head with a jar of grumblenosh, whatever that was. Sadly now was not the time. It would spoil his surprise. Because just at that moment an idea came to him. Ding! An idea so simple, it was brilliant. Simply brilliant and brilliantly simple. Brimple. It's in the Walliams Dictionary for a detailed definition. The girl had had a bath every single morning apart from Ned's birthday. So Ned would do, do to her exactly what his sister was going to do to him. She would suffer the bath of doom herself. Ned silently collected all of the jars on the gunk in the house and brought them to the bathroom. Once safely inside, Ned locked the door. Click. He didn't want Jemima bursting in on him before her bath of doom was ready. Ha ha, he chuckled to himself. Outside, it was still dark, but dawn was breaking and the birds were bursting into song. Tweet, tweet, tweet. One by one, he opened the jars of gunk and poured them into the bath. Splish, splash, splosh. There was 
Yellow gunk, brown gunk, black gunk, thick gunk, purple gunk, fizzy gunk, chot gunk, thin gunk, bubbly gunk, cold gunk, every kind of gulk, gunk you can imagine. Gallons and gallons of gunk. Eventually the bath was full. After what seemed like hours of fetching, carrying and unscrewing, the boy was exhausted. Catching his breath, Ned didn't notice what was happening right behind him. Gurgle, whatever was in that bath was coming to life. Chapter 6, Gunk Monster. As all the different types of gunk squirled together, waves formed in the bath. Swish! The waves swept up, 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 swash! And they swept down, 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 swoosh! Ned turned round. It was a horrifying sight. He opened his mouth to scream, but no sound came out. The bath was now a raging storm of gunk. Swish, swash, swoosh. It splashed all over the bathroom, coating everything in gunk. Splish, splash, splosh. The sink, the toilet, even Ned, all were gunked. Then just as soon as the gunk had coated everything, it peeled itself off and whooshed back together. Whoomp! Then the gunk began to take shape. At first it became a giant egg. Like the kind of egg a dort dinosaur might have laid, the egg bounced up and down, boing, 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 before smashing itself against the bathroom wall. Crack! There it is. It's flying around. Chapter 7. The outer layer cracked like a shell as the gunk inside oozed out. The oozing gunk then began to grow upwards and upwards, becoming a mountain. Whoosh! No, it was a volcano, an erupting volcano. It didn't shoot lather up into the sky, but rather gunk. Kaboom! Splurt! It splurted itself all over the bathroom ceiling before oozing back down to the floor to become an elephant. Hoo! It hooted. Then it became a shark. Chomp! No, a bird! Flap, flap! This gunk monster was swimming and flying all at once. Swish, flap, swish, flap. The boy gazed open-mouthed in awe. This was the greatest show on earth and it was all for him. Next, the gunk monster exploded into thousands of pieces as it became fireworks. Boom, boom, boom. Oh no, exclaimed the boy. What on earth have I done? Chapter 7 blobby blob. What the boy had done that day changed the course of history. In mixing together a thousand different jars of gunk, Ned had created a brand new matter. Slime. The world would never be the same again. This was big, bigger than big, bigger than the biggest, huge, amongst, which means big. You would know that if you owned a volumes dictionary.com. As Ned stayed deadly still, the slime began spinning round and round him. Whizz! It was a tornado of slime. A slime -ado. Open your volumes dictionary under S for a detailed def definition. No, thought Ned. I'm going to be slimed to death. He shut his eyes tight and he cried, Ah! Then the most amazing thing happened. The whirling tube of slime spun up over his head and slapped against the ceiling. Squelch! Then it began oozing downwards towards the boy. As it did, it began to take shape. Not human shape exactly, more like a blob on top of a blob on top of a blob. It's easier if I show you. It looked like this. A blobby, blobbyous blob that was hanging down from the ceiling. That's the Wallings definition of something very, 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 very blobby. A huge, slimy, upside down face was staring back at him. Good morning, it boomed. The boy's eyes darted around the bathroom. There was no one else there. This thing was talking to him. I said, good morning, it repeated. For something made of slime, it had a surprising posh voice as if it were royal, which seemed highly unlikely. Last time I checked, the royal family did not have a member who was made entirely of slime. Who, who, who are you? stammered Ned. The boy was trembling. I am anything you want me to be, replied the thing. With that, the blob of slime squelched upside down across the ceiling. Squelch, squelch, squelch. Next, it made its way down the wall, its slimy 
felt and acting like a suction pad against it. Squelch, squelch, squelch. Eventually, the thing was standing on the floor of the bathroom, peering down at Ned. Now, boy, tell me what you wish me to be. Is this like Aladdin? asked Ned excitedly. Is what like Aladdin? Like rubbing the lamp and a genie coming out and the genie giving you three wishes. The slime looked lost in thought for a moment before replying, No, there's no lamp and I'm not a genie and there aren't three wishes. Oh, replied Ned, there are infinite wishes. That's a lot, isn't it? It's infinite, so yes, I suppose it is, unless it was f infinite and one, which would be silly. Cool, exclaimed Ned. So, boy, what do you wish me to be? I can be anything and everything. A hippopotamus, a swarm of bees, a giant pair of bloomers. As it spoke, it shapeshifted into each of these things. Just think of something beginning with S. A sailing ship, a sphinx, a sausage, a sausage as tall as a tree, a steamroller. The boy looked on in wonder as it changed with dizzying speed. A symphony! With that, there was a sound of a huge drum being struck. Boom! The slime shattered into what seemed like hundreds of tiny globules. They flew past Ned and he realised that these weren't just globules, these were musical notes. As the sound of a symphony echoed around the bathroom, the, these musical notes danced through the air like butterflies. The boy watched in awe as they swooped and twirled in time to the music. Wow! he stammered. Then, just as soon as the symphony ended, the globules all merged together. This time, they didn't go back into being Slime's blobulous self. Oh, no. The globules merged back into the shape of a whale. The whale was so humongous, it filled up the entire bathroom. It floated in the air, swishing its tail. Swish, swoosh, swash. Am I back to normal, it asked. Something feels fishy. No, you're not back to normal, exclaimed Ned. Unless it's normal for you to be a great big ginormous whale. The whale of slime looked down and then fell through the air. Splat! It landed like dropped jelly on the bathroom floor. Silence. Ned stared at it. Wherever this thing was, it looked to be no more. It was an X thing. Lying motionless next to the wheels of the boy's wheelchair was nothing more than a puddle of gloop. Slime, called out Ned. He couldn't think what else to call it. And slime seemed appropriate. Are you all right? After a moment, the slime poured itself back together into the shape of a blob. That's better, it said. I felt all over the place. Thank goodness, exclaimed Ned. Is slime my name then, it asked. I can't think of a better one. Um, Roger, Archibald, Brenda, offered slime. I do feel like a Brenda. Hmm, mused the boy. I think you look more like a slime. Slime it is then, said Slime. Gave the boy a funny look, as much as a blob of slime can give anything a funny look. So, did you create me? Um, well, hesitated Ned. I guess I did. Father, exclaimed Slime. No, mother, no, what then? I guess we are well. Ned didn't dare say it at first, but something in his heart told him he should. Friends. Friends, repeated Slime. Friends, I like that. Yes, we are friends. The boy smiled and leaned over to hug his new friend. But all he got was a face full of slime. You didn't tell me your name, remarked Slime. Ned, replied Ned. I have a friend called Ned, exclaimed Slime. And Slime, yes, Ned, I want you to help me play a trick. Giddy, giddy, snorted Slime, rubbing his slimy hands together in glee, and on someone who has played a million tricks on me. Just then, there was a pounding at the door. Boom, boom, boom. What on earth's going on in there? A voice demanded. It was, of course, Jemima. Come out right now, Ned, or I'll boot this door down. Is that them, perchance? asked Slime. Now, how did you guess? replied the boy with a cheeky smile. Oh, so he's made slime, a new creature. And what they're going to do to Jemima. Hope you're enjoying our story. David Wallum certainly has an interesting way of writing, doesn't he? Guys, don't forget the school motto. If you see someone without a smile, give them one of yours. And keep on smiling, everyone. Bye now. <laughs>